Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to the course Nutrition for the Family. This is the fourth module in which we are studying about the nutrition care for females during physiological stress. And this is the fifth lecture of this module in which we shall be focusing on nutrition care of lactating mother. I am Dr. Jaspreet Kaur, presently working as Associate Professor in Government College for Girls, Ludhiana, Punjab affiliated to Punjab University Chandigarh and this project is funded by DTX Swayam Prabha MHRD New Delhi. In the last lecture we were studying about the physiology of lactation and then we studied what are the various factors which affect the whole lactation process. We studied about the composition of breast milk, its timeline of production and then we studied what are the reasons which causes failure to thrive in the infant. And in this lecture, we shall be focusing on the nutritional needs of lactating mother, in which we will study what is the recommended dietary allowance of various nutrients for a lactating woman, and then what are the dietary guidelines and what are the nutritional concerns during this phase and then lastly we will study about planning healthy diets for the lactating woman so let's study breastfeeding it imposes greater strain on the mother than the pregnancy as she has to nourish a rapidly growing infant with her breast milk the mother should eat a wide variety of foods to make sure that her own nutritional needs as well as her growing baby is able to get sufficient nutrition. If the diet of the mother had been satisfactory during the pregnancy, she will have enough stores for the successful breastfeeding. The requirements of different nutrients, they should meet the daily needs of the mother along with they should provide sufficient nutrients in milk for the growing infant and furnish the energy for the mechanics of the milk production process. Diet of the lactating mother and her nutritional status during the pregnancy it will affect the quality and the quantity of breast milk to some extent. Maternal nutrition and the muscle mass of mother and her infant they are associated if the mother takes good quality proteins and along with that she takes micronutrients this will help her in having good lean body mass during entire lactation process and this will also have high concentration of nutrients in the breast milk and this will help in good infant growth and along with this will also help in having high amount of growth hormone and insulin like growth factor 1. Now these two hormones they are very important for the infant growth and along with that they will help in enhancing the muscle mass of the infant also. Let's talk about energy requirements first. The energy cost of the lactation, it is determined by the breast milk output and its energy. The additional energy it is needed for the lactation, which is drawn from the maternal adipose tissues, which were laid when she was pregnant. So these reserves, they are being utilized. They are mobilized by the body to produce milk. Depending upon the adequacy of these stores, additional energy input it may be needed 
uh, from the lactating woman's diet in addition to the energy required during lactation certain conditions demand extra energy if the mother is a teenager or if she is feeding more than one child or if she is underweight or she is pregnant the increased need it is usually met with certain strategies for example the mother might increase the intake of energy or she may decrease her physical activity or there could be some energy sparing adaptations where she is doing these activities with the help of uh, certain uh, say energy sparing tools and there will be mobilization of the fat from the maternal reserves as we know which were developed during the pregnancy so it is a um, multiple strategies which help the mother to meet the increased energy needs it is important to consider the fat accumulation during the pregnancy when we are planning the diet of a lactating woman because otherwise we may overestimate the energy needs and this could lead to excess energy intake uh, by the mother the recommendations say that the daily additional energy requirement of the woman who exclusively feed their baby for the first 6 months it would be 600 kilo calories and after 6 months say around 7 to 12 months that means till the time uh, till the time the child gets 1 year old the mother will be needing around 520 kilo calories addition to what she was eating before so for the first 6 months mother has to consume around 600 more calories and for the uh, 7 to 12 months she should consume around 520 additional calories let's talk about protein the requirement it is always computed based on the secretion of the protein in the milk the protein content of milk is around 1.15 grams per 100 ml so uh, it is calculated that around 6.4 gram of protein it is secreted in the milk uh, for say around first 6 months and after that around 5 grams of protein is secreted for the another 6 uh, months that is uh, till the time the child gets 1 year old so therefore uh, the recommendations they say that 17 grams daily it is a safe allowance for a woman for the first 6 months and after that the mother should take additional 13 grams daily protein to meet her increased uh, uh, protein uh, needs that uh, tolerable upper limit of the protein should be less than 40% of total calories that means the contribution of energy from the proteins it should be less than 40% of total calories consumed if the energy of the protein is lacking that means the mother is not taking sufficient calories or she, uh, she is not taking sufficient amount of protein then what will happen there will be reduction in the milk volume rather than milk quality so the quality will not be that affected but the overall volume of milk production of milk that will be lowered but at very low protein intake the proportion of casein uh, which is the milk protein it may reduce in some mothers the total amount of fat in the breast milk it is not influenced by the mother's diet and the composition of milk fat it can reflect the composition of mother's diet so the n3 fatty acid content of the milk it can be improved if the mother is taking high amount of n3 fatty acids in her diet it is suggested that minimum level of total fat it should be 20% of the total energy so therefore lactating females they should consume at least 200 mg of docosahexaenoic acid dha that is long chain anthrepufa for good infant development 
and to furnish this 20% energy of total fat diets of pregnant and lactating women they should contain at least 30 grams of visible fat in their diets during lactation the requirement of carbohydrate increases to support the adequate lactose lactose content in the human milk the lactate is synthesized from the glucose so the requirement of carbohydrate increases the lactose content of human milk it is estimated to be around 74 grams per liter so assuming that the average mother it secretes around 700 milliliter of milk daily the additional requirement of carbohydrates is considered to be as 55 grams per day in addition to what the mother was taking before so the estimated average requirement has been set at 100 uh, grams when uh, mother was non pregnant or non lactating that was the amount of carbohydrate she was taking to that the ear says add 55 grams so that means 155 gram minimum carbohydrate should be taken and along with that considering the variation in the brain glucose utilization the recommended dietary allowance which adds certain safety margin for the lactating woman it is set at 200 grams daily now let us study about the mineral requirements during lactation so let's discuss first calcium and magnesium it is suggested that breastfeeding it is associated with transfer of approximately 200 milligrams of calcium daily to the infant through the breast milk and if the mother is taking low amount of uh, calcium its negative effect it will be compensated if the mother is already having good body mass index or if she is having a good body weight otherwise uh, the calcium will be provided by the mother's own body to the infant the increased amount of calcium it is required during the gestation period that means when the mother was pregnant for the mineralization of the fetal bones but now after the birth of the child it is diverted to the mother's milk production so it is suggested that an estimated average requirement of 1000 milligrams that means one gram of calcium has been set and if we add safety margin to it that means the recommended dietary allowance it is set at 1200 milligrams for the lactating woman however the tolerable upper limit that is the highest amount of uh, calcium which could be taken uh, safely is 2500 milligrams daily now let us talk about magnesium the secretion of magnesium in the breast milk it is around 20 to 25 milligrams daily so the rda is set at 325 milligrams daily and the estimated average amount is 270 milligrams daily for the lactating woman iron requirement during lactation it is some of the requirement of the mother and uh, along with that what is required for making up the iron which is lost to the breast milk since there is amenorrhea that means uh, during lactation the mother is not menstruating so the requirements they are based on the losses due to the basal loss of the body which is same as the normal adult that is around 14 micrograms per kg per day and to that uh, it is added that whatever is the amount of iron which is lost through the breast milk so it is recommended that an estimated average requirement of 16 milligrams per day and rda that adds to the safety margin uh, of uh, individual variations it is set at 23 milligrams per day for lactating women and the tolerable upper limit of the iron is 45 milligrams per day let's talk about zinc the breast milk zinc content it varies depending upon the duration of the lactation since the breast milk zinc levels they decline rapidly during the first one month 
the average breast milk content of the zinc during 1 to 3 months and 3 to 6 months of the lactation they are considered when we are planning diets for the lactating woman so it is recommended that additional 1 mg daily zinc should be added to absolute zinc requirement that means the normal requirement plus 1 mg of zinc should be added and EAR has been set at 11.8 mg per daily and to this EAR if we add certain safety margin the that is recommended dietary allowance it has been set at 14.1 mg daily for the lactating woman just like other nutrients the copper and iodine requirement that is also based on the individual needs of the mother along with that whatever are the losses of that nutrient in the breast milk they are uh, considered and uh, coming to the copper uh, considering the bioavailability of copper to be say around 50 percent an addition of 400 micrograms daily of copper it is recommended for the lactating woman and if we talk about iodine uh, it is recommended that uh, an indian lactating woman the ear that is estimated average requirement is set at 200 micrograms and rda which adds to the safety margin it has been set at 280 micrograms per day after minerals let's talk about certain important vitamins since uh, milk it is a rich source of uh, vitamin a especially retinol a lactating mother needs ample amount of this vitamin the additional needs during lactation they are calculated on the basis of vitamin a secreted in the milk the average vitamin a secreted in the mother's milk is 350 micrograms of retinol daily so considering that 700 ml of uh, milk secreted by the mother daily the, with the retinol content of around 46.4 micrograms per 100 ml the ear has been set at 720 micrograms per day and the rda has been set at 950 micrograms per day and the tolerable upper limit because we know it is a fat soluble vitamin so it will be deposited in the body and uh, while we are going for the supplementation we should understand that the top uh, tolerable upper limit is 3000 micrograms per day let's talk about certain water soluble vitamins which are important during uh, lactation period as the calorie and protein requirements they increase during lactation the requirement of thiamine that is vitamin b1 riboflavin vitamin b2 niacin vitamin b3 they also increase correspondingly because they are related to the energy metabolism so these increments for the vitamin b1 thiamine that is set at the ear should be 1.7 milligrams per day whereas if we add safety margin to this ear it uh, comes out to be 2.1 milligrams per day for thiamine and it is important to mention here that the thiamine content of the low uh, income group mothers it is around 15 micrograms per 100 ml but if there is supplementation of vitamin b1 it can go up to 20 micrograms per 100 ml so therefore we should give due importance to this vitamin the riboflavin content of uh, milk of low income indian women it is always less than 30 micrograms per 100 ml but of course we can uh, increase it to 30 micrograms per 100 ml with the help of supplementation if the diet meets the requirement of protein and the calcium the requirement of riboflavin would be definitely met milk which is not only a good source of calcium it is also a good source of riboflavin so the mother should take a sufficient amount of milk in her diet to meet the needs of these vitamins so this is the recommended dietary allowance and ear of lactating woman as we can see uh, during uh, 0 to 6 months and uh, during 
6 to 12 months, the EAR is 2.5 and 2.4 and RDA is 3 uh, milligrams for the first 6 months and 2.9 milligram uh, during the 6 to 12 months. The nicotinic content of the breast milk of Indian women, it ranges between 100 to 150 micrograms per 100 ml. This, the, the total amount lost uh, in the milk will be between 0.9 to 1.2 milligrams daily. So the dietary allowance of the niacin, they are calculated as per 1000 calories, she or uh, the woman or any person should consume 6.6 .6 milligrams of niacin equivalent. So whatever is the amount of energy that woman is consuming, she can use this as a guide. And it is recommended that during the entire lactation process, uh, according to the RDA 2020 recommendations, the mother is expected that an EAR of additional 4 milligram of niacin should be taken daily and coming to the safety margin which is added to EAR, it suggests that mother should take in addition to her normal requirements 5 milligrams of niacin uh, for meeting her uh, demands. Let us talk about pyridoxin that is vitamin B6. Now these levels they are found to be lower in Indian women. And for the first six months, the EAR of additional 0.22 milligrams and RDA of 0.26 milligram is suggested. And during the another half of the year, that is 6 to 12 months, addition of 0.16 milligram is uh, suggested as for the EAR and adding to the safety margin is it is recommended that the mother should take additional 0.17 milligrams of pyridoxin to meet her needs. For pentothenic acid at biotin on the basis of losses to the breast milk there uh, is a recommendation of adequate intake. We do not have EAR or RDA for these two vitamins. And for B5 or the pentothenic acid, the adequate intake is suggested as 7 milligrams per day. Whereas for biotin or the B7, the adequate intake of 30 micrograms per day is recommended to the lactating woman. Folic acid content of the breast milk, it is around 1.6 micrograms per 100 ml. At the higher level, the amount of folic acid lost by the mother would be around 25 micrograms daily. So therefore, uh, additional allowance of 100 micrograms it is recommended. So the EAR for folic acid is 280 microgram daily and recommended dietary allowance is 330 micrograms daily. The amount of uh, B12 which is secreted through the breast milk is uh, around 0.25 to 0.3 micrograms per 100 ml. So additional B12 vitamin, it is recommended that an EAR of 0.8 microgram in addition to the normal requirements should be added. And uh, if we add to the safety margin, additional 1 microgram of B12 should be recommended to the lactating woman. And uh, coming to the vegan mothers who, who uh, are not taking even the milk and milk products, they should take the vitamin B12 supplements to meet her and her infant's requirements. An appreciable amount of ascorbic acid, it is secreted in the mother's milk. And this additional needs during lactation they are calculated on the basis of vitamin C content which is secreted in the milk. Now studies, they have shown that uh, the Indian woman, they secrete around 20 milligrams of vitamin C daily during the lactation process. If we assume that the daily milk secretion is 700 milliliters and we know the ascorbic acid content of the mother's milk is 3 milligrams per 100 ml in a well-nourished mother, the additional requirement is suggested at 40 milligrams and recommended dietary allowance uh, is added 
to be 50 milligrams in addition to the normal RDA. So uh, along with that taking into consideration what are the cooking losses and uh, as we know vitamin C it is a heat labile water soluble vitamin. So the Indian Council of Medical Research it recommends that if we are taking EAR the EAR says 55 milligrams per day. So to that what we add we add 40 milligrams so the EAR amounts to be 90 milligrams daily but if we take into consideration the recommended dietary allowance which is 65 milligrams per daily for a non-pregnant non-lactating woman and the RDA for a lactating woman says add 50 milligrams to that so it is 65 plus 50 uh, milligrams per day. An increased amount of fluids it is necessary for the adequate milk production as milk is a fluid tissue. So it is recommended that total 4100 milliliters of uh, fluid should be taken by the lactating woman whereas uh, from the food she should get around 1250 ml and rest of the fluid should come from the beverages which could be in the form of water or juices, soups, buttermilk, milk, all these uh, items they add to the fluid which is necessary to produce milk. Now let us discuss important dietary guidelines for a lactating woman. As we know the requirements of a lactating woman they are maximum as compared to any other age group in a woman's life. So her diet should be balanced to meet the requirements and for that number of meals they can also be increased. In a balanced diet the food should consist of whole grains, complex carbohydrates and along with that she should take good fats also. It should also include plenty of greens and colored vegetables and fruits to add to the micronutrients in her diet and mother should be encouraged to take different beverages to meet the fluid requirements. To prevent osteoporosis mother should take good amount of milk daily and to meet additional nutritional requirements the quantity of the food should be increased along with the quality. Variety in the diet it helps the mother to consume required amount of foods. No food need to be withheld from the mother unless it causes distress to the infant. So occasionally uh, tomatoes, onions or uh, some uh, cabbage family members, chocolates, spices or condiments they may cause some gastric distress or loose stools in the infant. Vitamins and mineral supplements they should be taken as we have just seen that the requirements of these uh, nutrients are very high during this phase. But if the mother is under 17 years of uh, age, she has um, uh, multiple gestation or uh, under such conditions she needs to take additional care in meeting the nutritional requirements. And if uh, too much of weight gain, it has to be avoided. And when the baby is weaned, the mother is not feeding her child that much. So the mother should reduce her food intake so that she doesn't become overweight. And on the contrary, if the mother is losing weight very fast while she is feeding her baby, her calorie intake should be revised and it should be increased. Let us talk about the concept of galactogogues or the lactogogues. They act by increasing the prolactin secretion which in turn increases the milk production. As we know prolactin is a milk production hormone. They also work psychologically and to have a marginal effect on the milk production. As sucking as we know it is the best lactogogue. The diet can include certain lactagogues which stimulate the production of milk. So for that garlic, milk, almonds and garden cress seeds they are considered to increase the milk production. Some also believe that the food of animal origin like goats, meat, fish and mutton they increase the secretions of breast milk. Special uh, foods like stoned laddu, 
or the gond laddu they are given during the lactation this practice can be encouraged because they are nutrient dense foods let us talk about the weight management of the lactating woman the breastfeeding for at least 5 to 6 months it mobilizes the fat from the lower body of the mother and it enhances the postpartum weight loss the modification of energy needs they are based on the ideal body weight and rate of weight loss after the delivery and along with that other health conditions of the mother they are also taken into consideration gradual weight loss it should be at the rate of half kg to 1 kg per month this assures that that the adequate uh, breast milk supply is maintained and low calorie diets they are not recommended for the obese uh, woman or the obese mother during the lactation period because it may have some effects on decreasing the breast milk production if the mother reduces her calories and gradual weight loss and adoption of lifelong healthy eating patterns they should be encouraged let us have a look at certain nutritional concerns caffeine it is absorbed in the human milk and it can inhibit the letdown reflex and the metabolism of uh, caffeine in the infant it takes longer than the adult so the irritability of the infant would be the result of uh, mothers uh, taking more caffeine in her diet and it is recommended that the caffeine containing beverages should be limited to 2 cups in a day for a lactating woman chocolate it also contains small amount of caffeine and it does contain theobromine which is a stimulant which is similar to caffeine theobromine it can cause infant to become irritable and it should be limited in the mother's diet infant may be sensitive to and he can react to certain foods which are eaten by the mother some common allergens are say cow's milk or fish and then eggs peanuts or wheat they are the common allergens spices and uh, strongly flavored foods such as garlic onion cumin they can alter the flavor of breast milk and along with that uh, there are certain pesticides herbicides and other contaminants they are also transferred to the mother's milk and similarly drugs are also transferred and uh, almost all the drugs which are taken by the mother they appear to some extent in her milk so the drugs they should be avoided during the lactation there could be certain feeding difficulties for example if there is improper position or the technique of the feeding uh, is not correct this predisposes the mother to the sore nipples and this inhibits the reflexes of mother So now let us talk about how we can plan a balanced diet for a lactating woman. As we know, lactation is a very high demanding period. So additional amount of protein and energy rich foods they are to be included by the mother, and for that additional amount of fat that is in the form of ghee uh, should be added, which can supply additional energy. and along with that it can supply vitamin a also and there are some other preparations which contain um, protein iron calcium and vitamin b should be added in her diet uh, green leafy vegetables and at least two servings of uh, citrus fruits they make up for the demand of many vitamins yeah, especially b vitamins condiments they should be sparingly used because apart from being harmful they uh, they can actually give flavor to the milk and which could be repulsive to the baby besides three large meals two small in between meals they should be planned for the mother so that she can increase her energy requirements and fluid intake it should be adequate to meet the requirements of milk production now socio economic status of the family it should be considered and the selection of food stuff it can be based on the budget of the family 
and variety should be provided in terms of color, texture and flavor so that mother enjoys eating her food. Likes and dislikes of the mother should be taken into consideration and age of the mother should also be considered. Uh, if uh, there is an adolescent mother who has not completed her own growth, her additional needs will be met only through the food. And the food should be served in a pleasant atmosphere since most of the medicines they are absorbed into the mother's bloodstream and secreted in the milk, use of medication should be under the medical supervision only. Let's summarize what we have studied regarding the nutrition care of the lactating woman. In the previous lecture, we had studied about the physiology of lactation in which we studied uh, the prolactin reflex that is a milk production reflex when the baby sucks the breast the nerve impulses they are passed to the spinal cord to the interior pituitary leading to the secretion of prolactin hormone which will produce the milk and after that we studied about the second reflex that is known as letdown reflex uh, it is caused by the production of oxytocin which is released by the posterior pituitary gland and oxytocin contracts the muscle cells around the alveoli of the breast and squeezes the milk out of the breast and propel it down to the nipples and in the baby's mouth. And then we studied about what are the factors affecting lactation in which we studied about the neuroendocrine factors, we studied about the nutritional, psychological and the social factors. Then we studied about the composition of milk in which we studied about the first milk that is colostrum, transitional milk and finally the mature milk of the mother. Then we studied about the factors affecting the quantity and the quality of mother's milk. Then we studied about various factors which uh, cause failure to thrive in which we studied about certain uh, maternal causes that is uh, uh, causes which lead to poor production of the milk or poor letdown of the milk. And then we studied about certain infant causes uh, which could be because of poor intake or because of high energy requirements or because of a high, a low net intake of the food. In this lecture, we studied about the macro and micronutrients during the lactation. Then we studied about the various dietary guidelines, nutritional concerns during lactation. And then we studied about the points to be remembered while planning meals for a lactating mother. 1st to 7th August every year is celebrated as World Breast Feeding Week. This finishes our fourth module that is nutritional care of women during physiological stress. Thank you very much.